Hello, hello. How are you all? Let's let's let some of you roll on live. And I will patiently wait. Hello, here we go. Hi guys, how are you? It is time for another fertility hot seat. Do you know how it goes down? Let me remind you. You have to request to join me live. And in that, you are in the know that you're going to come on live to my channel. And we're going to stream to everyone. But you get a free 15-minute fertility consult with me, with my brain, with the woman who wrote those four books up there and has helped thousands of women on their path to motherhood. It is not medical advice. It is based on my clinical experience. So anything we do discuss, I do recommend that you talk to about with your own healthcare practitioner. But I can and have made major impacts on women's fertility journeys just by them joining me live here. So I'm going to let you guys start rolling in and you have to hit that plus button below and request to join me live. And then at random, I'm going to pick one of you to come on the fertility hot seat and we will break down your case and I will give you my advice on what your best next steps are forward and how to best support yourself and your body so you can have this baby. So now I'm going to wait. I want a handful of you to request to join. Then I'm going to select one at random. We're going to do this. In the meantime, um, okay, so if someone has, you guys have to start hitting the plus button below. Otherwise, I'm just going to go away. I got other things to do. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> In the meantime, um, it is National Fertility Challenge Awareness Week is what I'm calling it. N-F-C-A-W and not N-I-A-W. And yeah, um, have some exciting things in store for you and... You're going to have to keep an eye out for that. But on Thursday, we're going to talk all about on my live all about why I hate the, the I word, that big I word that so many of you identify with and that I'm not going to say right now because I don't want to. Um, we have our womb healing circle this evening, but doors are closed for joining that. I apologize, but check it out. It's a monthly offering that we're having now and it's read. It's led by our team psychologist. Incredible. If you guys are local to the Westport, Connecticut, Fairfield County area tomorrow night, uh, um, Wednesday night um, at Rejuvenating Fertility Center, I am hosting a, a live Q&A with me and the head nurse at RFC. It's free for RFC members, um, I mean RFC patients, but $25 for everyone else. And that's really fun. You can come meet me live and chit chat about stuff. Do some guided meditation. So let's see, people are rolling on. Let me see, let me see, okay. All right guys, I'm gonna do it. So it's 15 minutes. Carrie, I'm gonna do. Let's see how this goes. Oh, here we go. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm just um, working from home on a lovely Excel and needed a break. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what's going on. How can I help? Um, I've had an egg retrieval about last July. Okay. 15th. Um, I had two embryos and they, uh, when we did the genetic testing, they came back abnormal. Okay. Um, when they did blood tests, I have a gene mutation, the MTFHR. Okay. The C variant. Mm -hmm. um, and then I fall, I've done a couple of your um, workshops. Okay. Yes, you Thank can you. get pregnant. Okay. And then I can't remember the one that was in January, January 10th. The, re the reboot one. one? Yeah, I did that one also. Okay. Um. I've so not the yes, work. you can't get pregnant e-course. You you did the the yes, the mindset one? Yes. Last year? Yeah. Okay. We called it, okay. we're calling it Ignite now. We changed it because it was getting confusing oh. with all the names. Yeah. <laughs> all the yeses and all my titles. But um, okay. 
And so you did the reboot then after that for that retrieval. Are you going to go into another retrieval or you're just trying naturally now or what's? Well, I'm planning a wedding. So Oh, exciting. Okay. Yeah. So that happens in July. Um, we've been okay. trying naturally. Okay. Um, I think the, the mindset really does help all those classes that I've done. Yeah. Um, okay. And then now I'm working out. Okay. So I'm changing my lifestyle. Okay. Um, I guess it's more of, sorry, I get emotional. No, it's so hard. It's, it's more of, do I do another egg retrieval? Yeah. After the wedding? Or do I just continue to try naturally? Like, or should I, there's all these. Yeah. Should I try a different doctor? When you just do all the things, it gets tiring. <laughs> yeah, it's exhausting. So how how many eggs did they like how's your your numbers if you will? How's your reserve when you did it last July? Um I believe it was 0.51. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then the crazy part is because I love numbers and data. So the first time I did it was 0.29 and then mm -hmm. I did it again and it was higher. So it happens all, happens all the time. All yeah. The time. Even though we're told that that's like impossible, but it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then through my research, I've learned, well, that depends on your cycle that month. It's a so, fertility. It's that's what we we say. It's basically like the potential for that month. That's how I would look at it. It's like your fertile potential for that month. But also the other side of it is that I've seen girls with super low AMH and super high AMH. You know, like non PCOS, super high AMH, and um and and there's research too. There's a it's a, not a huge study, but a decent size. I think a couple hundred women that same age group, same AMH levels. Um, I mean, sorry, varying AMH levels, same fertility outcomes in one year of trying. So that we don't know how much it actually impacts things. Um, but I guess, I guess too, like what I'm trying to get at with the question is, do you, I mean, I think there's a couple of ways to look at it. Like you could do another retrieval and in bank embryos and not use them and then continue to try naturally. So that way you could, uh, you know, capitalize on your current state now, if you will. Um, so something like to have as a an insurance policy, obviously no guarantees. You went through a retrieval and didn't get anything, you know, but um, there's that. Or you give yourself, you know, I do this a lot with my girls. Like you give yourself a timeline. Like, okay, right. what if 2022, I'm going to try this whole year. And then if I'm not where I want to be, come 2023, we're going to go back in. And then I would recommend, because how did you feel when you did the reboot? And, and are you still kind of sticking to that plan, if you will, diet wise? Um, I mean, I've fallen off every now and then, but I've created a lot of good healthy habits. Good. I'm gluten free. Okay. Um, I love sweet potatoes <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> and beets on my salad. And good. Okay. Um, like I've just incorporated a lot more vegetables and good. Um, so and what I about feel like your I health? Have like, a good rhythm, huh? How's your health in general? Do you feel pretty healthy and, and oh. vital? Yes, yes. Good. I I rarely get sick. Um, okay. I feel very healthy okay. overall. Okay. Um, my stress levels can be high because I own a business. Okay. Um, so that's why I've been using working out to help with that. Good. good. Okay. Um, setting boundaries, not over committing. Good, healthy, good. Yep. And what about like when you did the reboot and I had you fill out the red flag symptom list? Did you have a lot of red flags and now they're less I, or did you not have a lot? I did. Um, okay. I think I had a lot of overall inflammation. Okay. Um, like if I eat certain foods, then I can retain water weight really easy. Or like okay. um, the acne if okay. I have any dairy, it's an instant breakout. Act. And then when you were doing these retrievals in the past, were you on any specific like fertility diet or anything? No. Okay. No. So do you mm -hmm. feel like you 
potentially you're healthier now than you were then? Oh, yeah. I okay. definitely feel way healthier. And, and there was never a diagnosis talk. as to why you weren't getting pregnant, right? No diagnosis? Just uh, the diminished ovarian reserve. Okay. And how long were you guys trying before you went to IVF? Um, 2019 of July. It seems like everything happens in July for me. <laughs> <laughs> July. Okay. So July to July. And then we did the retrieval. Yeah. And then another July to July, now we're getting married, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it was like a year of trying, then went into it was, it was about two years of trying. Two years of trying. Okay. Pandemic. I'm in California. So yeah, everything was shut down. Yeah. And what about sperm? How's sperm health? Um, he has super sperm, he says. Okay. And they confirmed it. Okay, of course. So it's all on you. And then your periods are, are easy, normal. How often they come regularly? Uh, they come regularly. I do at times have pretty bad cramps to where okay. they, they like make you bend over. Okay. Um, there, I don't know if I've never been diagnosed with um, endometriosis. Right. But it sounds like it could be maybe. Mm -hmm. And what about, do you get any pain with ovulation? Um, yeah, not too bad. I can tell when I'm ovulating. Okay. And I see the discharge or the okay. mucus. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty clockwork and pretty normal with my cycle. Okay. Um, and any, did you ever do an HSG, the histosalpingogram where they check that your tubes are open? I have not. Okay. That's interesting. They didn't do that before they did an IVF on you? Mm -mm. That's interesting. I would maybe get one of those. Like your gynecologist could do that. You want to make sure your tubes are open. That could be a part of this, right? Um, mm -hmm. Another reason I ask though is because typically if, if I suspect endometriosis and the HSG is painful, it makes me think there's endometriosis because endo kind of grows like cobwebs and it can like hold back the tubes or the ovary. That's why I like the pain. Um, I would also say though, like if you're, if you're sticking to the egg quality diet and kind of like that reboot style plan, um, the fertility reboot that you are effectively reducing inflammation, endometriosis is an inflammatory condition. So, you know, you're slowly healing that process. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would stick to like, if you know, gluten and dairy or no, your body doesn't like them as much as you can stick to that and, and stick to the plan with like the six to eight serving the vegetables and, you know, the good quality protein. I would do the higher dose of fish oil, like 3000 milligrams a day of fish oil, potentially uh, baby aspirin in your luteal phase. You can clear that with your, your gyno as well. Um, I would get an HSG. I would ask your gyno, I would say, you know, no one's ever done this on me because a gynecologist can run that. Like it's a pretty straightforward test. I would get that done. Okay. Um, I would do castor oil packs in your follicular phase. Like I would just kind of like, you do any acupuncture or anything or no? I did. I have an okay. acupuncture. I haven't been. Okay. Recently. Yeah. So maybe it's like getting those things back in the mix and saying, okay, I'm going to do all these things like on the natural perspective, you know, and try through the end of the year. I don't know. How does that feel to you emotionally? I think that feels great. It feels doable. And then, um, go ahead. I think the idea of another egg retrieval is like, oh, that's just a lot of shots in my belly. <laughs> yeah, it's daunting. Um, and and you've had trauma. I just had a call earlier today, and, and she just had her best retrieval uh, after, I think, five. Um you know, after doing basically like my protocol since September. Um, so she said to me for the first time ever, now I can actually entertain another retrieval because I don't have trauma associated with it. You know, so it's like, it's, a, you know, it's not a good memory for you. So I could see that. Right. But I think you also want to think like, okay, I'm going to cross all my T's. Like if I'm going to try naturally, like let's put my best foot forward here and do all these right. things. Um, and then if we're not there, where we want to be by the end of this year, then let's consider. And maybe instead of just going right back to the same doctor, perhaps you interview like one or two, you know, other ones just to see like, maybe there's, 
you know, maybe the amount of meds they used on you last time was too high of a dose and that could have compromised right. the quality, you know, that kind of thing where you're kind of, you take, you take um, the driver's seat instead of giving it, you know, just assuming like, oh, this is the doctor I have to go to. It's like, okay, I'm going to see if you're the right fit for me versus, you know, whether or not you'll treat me. Right. And um, my partner, Chad, he, he wants us to try a different doctor too. Okay. Just because he thought of the, the same thing. Um, Meds, yeah. And then what the doctor did tell me is if we did another egg retrieval with him, he'd add a human growth hormone. Okay. And if my eggs came back abnormal, he wouldn't do another round. Right. Yeah. I don't think that's enough of a change, personally. I mean, I don't know the, the dosing and things like that you were on, but... Um... HGH is still, you know, I would like you could even look at ovarian PRP, I think is a little more promising than HGH right now, as far as the research is showing. But, um, but yeah, you want your doctor being willing to change things. But I think too, for you to say like, okay, well, I'm going to see if there's somebody else who's a better fit for me. And usually like with the DOR diagnosis, um, you're going to do better with a mini IVF than with a straightforward IVF. And so I would think about that too. Um, and then for you, supplements, are you doing like all the things that I talk about in the books or what's your regimen? I found the optimal seeking health, the prenatal. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, a lot of the times vitamins make me feel sick. Okay. That's not fun. So, um, I'm just sticking with that one right now. And then okay. this, this B12 vitamin too. Okay. I, I would try to get fish oil in. There's one okay. that I like that is like, I always say you get more bang for your buck. It's Nutrigold is the brand. It's on my website, but it's the Nutrigold. They have a double strength and I think they maybe have a triple strength. Sometimes it's out of stock, but that one you only need to take like three pills a day and you get a very good dose of fish oil, especially if we suspect endometriosis or any kind of inflammation. Um, I would add that in. I would get okay. your vitamin D levels checked make sure your D isn't low because that really impacts hormones. That really impacts AMH. We know low D is associated with low AMH. Um, not that 0.5 is low, but I'm just saying, I know how yours jumped around. So it could have been a vitamin D thing. Um, and what else? The liver pills, if you could do that, if you're not eating liver. Or you could also make like a shake. You could open some of the things up and put them in if that makes it. And oh, there's also... It's not on my site, but I was actually on their site today. Um, this is needed.com. It's a um, prenatal, but they have a, a powder, which you okay. might like. And okay. it's a 30 day supply. It's this is needed.com, like T H I S is needed, N E E D E D.com, which I know my team's watching. So I feel like we should put this on the site. But it's nice because it's a powder. And then you could also open up the liver pills and put that in and kind of like get in the habit of like a little smoothie action. Okay. I love the phase two smoothie. Yeah, there you go. So you could add that to this. I love the phase two yeah. smoothie too. Um, and then, and the liver pills too. I mean, I just pop them open sometimes if I don't feel it or like for my my little one, I pop them open into food. And typically if it's a strong enough, you know, mix, especially if you make a smoothie with an avocado, you're not going to taste them. Um, yeah. And this is like 70 bucks for, I mean, it's not cheap, but 70 bucks for a 30 day supply for this prenatal. That's not so bad. Um, especially a powder one. Yeah. So I would say prenatal fish oil, liver, get your vitamin D checked. Um, you know, the diet with the veggies and the protein and the fat, get the HSG, put him even though he's got super sperm i would have him on like the fish oil or a good pre a good multi um okay. or the spirulina i like too for men and then get in the habit of like have you been doing any of the castor oil packs do you ever do those I, I haven't done those so that's something i could add yeah and it's just in your follicular phase but if you just google amy ralph and castor oil it'll come up there's a video and a blog and all the all the steps um okay. or you can dm us and we can send you the link but you have to DM us. I can't DM you. It's just the way it works. Um, do those in the follicular phase. I'm trying to think what else. If you can get back to acupuncture. And like you said, the exercise, the mindset. And just like, okay, I have a plan. Like a looser plan that maybe that'll make you feel less like, 
what am I doing? Am I, you know, am I wasting time? Am I making the right decisions? Um, but then also you want to prep, prep for that if there is a retrieval, right? I think you should give yourself a three month prep time if you have it, you know, so right. that easily gets us into the fall anyway. So why not to say, okay, I'm going to commit to this and then see what happens come the end of the year. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> like after the, best, the best laid plans, right? I mean, but yeah, so does it feel like, I don't know, does your heart feel at ease thinking about that? Well, yeah, just like a timeline for myself. Yeah. Because there's so much to do in one day, so. Well, that's it. And then it's like, you know, amping, amplifying your chances of, of making that baby. That's how I would look at it, you know. But then keeping, you know, I just had one client before who was like, well, maybe I'll, you know, should I wait till the summer or the fall? And then I'll go back to the doctor. And I was like, no, you're going to go now and like start. I was like, cause I want to hold you accountable. Cause this is your dream. Right. You know? So I think the timeline is smart so that we don't like lose time, but also that you feel like, okay, I've crossed all those T's. I've tried all this stuff and I've given it a good, like six solid months trying naturally, you know, like with all these things. Um, and then you're in the best shape too. If you continue all the lifestyle, diet and supplements, then I think you're in the best shape to go and have a good cycle. Right. I think so too. Okay. All I right. think that's great validation. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any more questions for me right now? Do you feel better? Uh, I think it's just finding the right doctor and yeah, you know, with many IVFs or um, things like yeah, that. Search, search many IVF clinics near you. Where are you? What part of Cali? I'm in Southern California. Okay. Los County. Yeah. So there's definitely good many IVF clinics there. Um, and I know a lot of people travel to see Dr. Amy. Uh, she's in San Fran, but she works. Who does she work with? Oh, it's not, it's going to escape me. There's definitely, you could go on her page though, too, and ask like, who, who do you recommend in the LA area for mini IVF? I bet you she would answer or someone from her team would. Um, but let me just see mini IVF. Also my, my buddy Mark Sklar is out there. He's in San Diego, but, um, oh, this is it. Havingbabies.com. That is the, that is the website that she sends people to. Okay. Know um it's in the hasadina does that sound right yeah oh that's not far from me there is um yeah this is their website but they have there was this physician let me see i just because i was just doing a call with someone who sees dr amy and then was recommended to I think it's Diana Shavkin, C-H-A-V-K-I-N. Either way, I think these all look like there's a lot of doctors here. So that might be a nice, yeah, a nice start and see, you know, look at the mini IVF and kind of like make a plan in a sense of like, okay, this is where we're going to go. So we're going to consult with, we're going to collect information and just put yourself in the driver's seat versus letting the doctors dictate it. Right. Okay. That okay. sounds Okay. I don't have any other questions? Okay. Well, you can DM I, us. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed all the different um workshops you have cuz it makes it really simple if you have a busy life and you can watch the videos later. Oh, well, thank things. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, keep us posted and have, have, have fun planning the wedding. Have a fun okay. wedding. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Let's see. I'm going to let her go. Okay. Hi guys. Um, doctor for mini IVF in San Diego. I think it's Jen next, but um, I think we do have a resources page on my website. I'm, listen, I think, I, I believe we've been collecting names. So you could um, message my team to info at Amy Ralph, and then we can give you information, Andrea. And everybody else is just watching patiently. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think the highlight too, the takeaway for me, or that I want all of you to think about um, from that conversation. I think two things is like, don't forget that this is your body, your time, your money, your resources, um, and not giving our power away in those situations. And then also that I do think having a timeline makes us feel uh, much more in control in a situation where there's really not a lot of control, right? So to think about like, okay, what's my plan? So, and, and be looser instead of like, oh, this could be the month. It's like, okay, what about if the next six months that could be the month? And then if not, what, what are my next steps? Or I always like to like half of my calls today were, were figuring out not just plan A, but plan B and plan C. And so that I think creates a sense of ease in, in at least I know the woman I work with one-on-one -on -one, and that my team works with one-on-one -on -one, that we help them develop this plan for themselves. And so for you to think of like that, because it starts to feel really big and out of control if it's just an every month kind of thing, like, well, this could be the month, so I won't make any plans, you know? And it's like, Ugh. that's a surefire way of putting your life on hold. And so I think if you say, okay, this is, this is the fertility plan. And then I can plan these things around that. Right. So, because, um, Otherwise, we really lose ourselves in this journey. And I don't want that for you. I want you to know who you are and stay in touch with yourself and your life while you are in the process of making this job. Okay. I'm going to go. I love you guys. Another fun fertility hot seat. Um, and I'll see you all on Thursday. We're going to talk about why I don't like that, that big I word. And... Um, yeah. And if you guys are local in the area, come and see me and nurse fertility nurse Jess. That's her handle on Instagram at um, rejuvenating fertility center on Wednesday evening in Westport, Connecticut at 6 PM, six to seven. And Dr. Murphy will be around too. And so yeah, pop in, say hi, bring some questions. We'll do a guided meditation and have some tea and some seltzer. I brought some fruit last time and plantain chips and um, yeah, it was very intimate last time. And, you know, I enjoyed that. It was just nice. Are you recommending mini IVF for low AMH and age above 42? Uh, I'm not really specific on numbers um, or numbers, either AMH or uh, age. It's more just a lot of girls do better with less meds, even if they have a good AMH and they're 35. Uh, so it really just depends on the case. Yeah. Okay. 